was going to say it sounds great, but I don't know if that's enough. Yeah, that is enough, actually. Um, I don't know, the thing is I don't want to say anything that's going to knock any other records I've made, but I don't know whether it's just me and my general peculiarities, but I've never seemed to be able to make a record that I can like, sit and listen to and uh, just enjoy without any interference from, from anything really. But this time around we seem to have done that, you know, just made a record that it's, it's just a great record and that's that and it's to be listened to and enjoyed and I listen to it and enjoy it. Well, the major way to change since the last album is the departure of Patrick Walden and the addition of uh, Michael Whitnell uh, on uh, the guitar TTs. So it's not just the guitar playing, it's songwriting really. Before the main the songwriting um, thing was was Peter and uh, Patrick and now it's, it's uh, Peter and Mick. Yeah, Mick was always around the band, guitar taking with Pat, and there was a fallout with Peter and Pat weren't really getting on, so he just decided to call it a day, I think, those two. So that's the main chain. That's that's the big big thing that's changed, which is which is really informed the way the music's gone. It's mixed more of a much more of a reggae based guitarist really. There was a point about a year ago when we were both at a bit of low ebb and um I'd not been in the band for long. And I sort of said to him, uh, it's a bit I don't know if he'd want me to tell you this. But I said to him, oh, carry on at this rate, we're just going to end up dead, man. And I says, why don't we just st stop this shit and fucking get on with what we were put on the earth to, to do, and fucking make some classic tunes. Because, you know, I, I'd hate for Pete to, to, to be remembered as Kate Moss's, that bloke who was that, you know, like, like the Andrew Ridgely of punk or something, you know what I mean? And to die, uh, I just, just want him to be remembered for being brilliant musician. I don't think he's done his best yet. You know, everyone's libs, libs, libertines, libertines and but you know, he's twenty eight years old and he's he's a brilliant musician. It was one of those long lost mornings in the Laburnum Street days in Hackney. Yeah, that came about over the two nights when me and Pete uh, stayed up you know, creating over there, just before he was sent down for the second time to Pentonville. Kind of started uh, uh, during about two, two tours ago. We were trying really hard to. We were, we were thinking we were listening to a lot of Kinks songs, and uh, <laughs> we thought let's, let's try and write a song that sounds like the Kinks, basically. I think it was a riff from Mick. I think he'd come up with this kind of Kinks esque riff. Um, yeah, and then I think Peter kind of put a chorus in. You talk, I actually talk a good game. When he first played it to us, like all of us wandering around, like the next couple of weeks, going, "You talk," uh, and <laughs> we realised it was it was quite a hook. I think that one changed slightly when we was recording it from the early demos we'd done, 
I think they wanted to, because the chorus is probably not, it's not not as catchy. But I think that the main hook in that is when he when he sings "You Talk." So I think the initial one that was the verse, and then we had a chorus, the verse, chorus. Now they focused a lot more on that vocal part. So I think when we came to record it, Stephen wanted to really make that more of the song and more of the actual the hook. I wrote that. Uh, oh, I wrote that with um, with Kate actually. Uh, sat in bed. Uh, yeah, just try, I was just trying to impress her with a song really, and in the end she changed a lot of the words and. Fans around to the album, but there was one bit in it actually. I just I'd like to get this in because Stephen Street took it out. But when it goes, um, I just like getting and it's supposed to go leather babes and looking for the love. Behind your eyes, but he didn't like the leather babes, so he just changed it to that. Yeah, he tricked me into saying, Never said that was clever. I just like getting leather. He said, Just try saying leather properly once, and we can maybe put it in once. And then he's taking it all out. Working with Stephen Street was a joy, it was a stabilizing element that uh, was. Was, was kind of needed. All of us have, have learnt a lot from working with Stephen that if you do go with someone and, and put your trust in them, this is the result and it speaks for itself, I think. Clint Eastwood in the middle eight. Uh, vicious old chorus. Uh, quite blatantly Wolfman lyric, some of them like, you said that you love me, why don't you fuck? Uh, uh, hey, one of my favourite tracks as it goes. I'm by the time. Side of A is probably the, the one song on the album that has survived the longest out of them all. I mean, yeah. It started out as a song called Albert. So I went, Oh, Albert. Oh, your cheeks are china red. It's good fun to play that one, and because the tempo is all over the place, there's no strict tempo. It's like slow then fast, and whatever tempo Peter dictates to where we go, or I dictate regarding just hi hats. I'm a crumb begging baghead, baby. Oh, I bet you say that to all the girls. Crumb begging baghead? Uh, it's a fiction song. It's kind of now 
turned into a bit of a doorsy sounding thing with, with that keyboard played over it, and especially the end rock out. I don't know, it's just a, a real simple, I see it as just a simple garage blues number really. But it was initially, but I think it's taken on life its own now, it's suddenly sounding really big. That's my nickname, Stooky. He came up with it, we were pretend to be two pissed up Scots blokes, and um, yeah, that, that's actually, if you work it out, if you, if you sit and play it on guitar, if you actually play guitar, anyone out there, if you sit, sit and play it, it's fucked forever. I'm giving all the secrets away here. Started out sounding, it almost sounded a bit like Sonic Youth. And I'm, I'm a big Sonic Youth head. Um, but Stevens kind of smoothed it over a bit. He's going to put, put some glocks on it and some extra acoustic guitars and quite a bit of reverb. That's French Dog. Basically, French Dog is uh, a little character that Peter has been scrolling on um, notebooks and walls and people's foreheads and stuff for years. Pops up all over the place in London if you look closely. Um, on um, the outside of tube trains and old lady shopping baskets, like, you'll see them loads of even. A lot of kids have had him tattooed as well. He's a little French dog. Mm. <laughs> Originally, it was a bit more punky and sort of a more of a how you'd expect the band to be affair, and it kind of developed into this jazzy kind of mad thing. Well, I really like that tune. It uh, shows shows a different side to the band, I suppose. That's Pete's Pete's number. Isn't it? I like that the lyrics are great in that one. I think that's a really could be a strong single. I don't know. It's another side to Baby Shambles that people don't realise. We do. They think we just get on rock out punk rock classics, but. Um, as you're aware, we've got a few more different sides to us than that. Daddy's booming, yeah, Daddy. Uh, a proud man who knows he's the baddie, but. And the whole idea of, I don't know, falling in love when you're a young man with a girl, uh, carrying her over the threshold and thinking she's too good looking to do the cooking. But that was 20 years ago, and now it's a lousy life with a washed up wife of, of a permanently plastic pissed up bastard. Peter wrote the, the verse chords to that the same the same night he first wrote the chords to Lost Out Murder. He came in uh, and plugged in and he's like, take this out. We started playing gather gang get it gang and instinctively Adam and I started playing like a girls and boys esque kind of blurry kind of vibe. 
a kind of a disco beat and the um, boom, 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 bass line. When I started Murder, um, I think it's just like a, a nice ballad from Peter. I didn't have obviously anything to do with it regarding he wrote it himself. And Bert Yanks came in and played it. Um, so yeah, I just it's a nice Peter ballad, and it'd be nice to have something like that on the album. It's nice to show that that side of it. I think down in Albion there was maybe merry-go-round. It was still not wasn't showing off his full potential as that kind of a writer as much as that that song. There. This time round, it was all done in quite a short space of time, and we kind of hit the nail on the head. But it's down in Albion. There was lots of nails. Kind of flying all over the place, and yeah, we all together, you know. When when you're in the thick of it, you don't. Sometimes you don't know if he's good or bad because you hear it that many times, and you know it's and it when it's your baby, so to speak, you you you, you lose. Yeah, you just can't tell sometimes. So. This record's for my brother. Don't look at me like that. It's gonna take you back. Too much been too unkind Get up off your back Stop smoking that Change your life Just my change